I've had the joy of partnering with Be Nice um, over the last three years with Jeff. If you've spent any time with Jeff Elhart, um, you know that he's passionate about the issue of mental health. Jeff, will you join us, please? And, and uh, you know, it's mental health education, suicide prevention, uh, intervention. It creates a, a, a positive culture of change through simple daily actions. It's the stop, drop, and roll of mental health education that, te- there you go, <laughs> that teaches people to notice, invite, challenge, and empower themselves and others. And we're basing this series on the same NICE. Today is Notice the Pain because we want you to have a tool. So, Jeff, you, you, um, this is for you and Sherry and your family kind of become the blood that th- flows through your veins. Why? Well, uh, I lost my brother um, shortly after his uh, bout of depression, and uh, so it threw me into this whirlwind of mental illness awareness and suicide prevention, and uh, I'm grateful to this community, this community, this church community, this community of West Michigan to really wrap their arms and get behind uh, this need, this great need, whether we're talking about teenagers, youngsters, uh, young adults, or people that are in their retirement ages. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a subject that needs to be talked about, but also, more importantly, an action plan put into place, and that's what Be Nice is all about. You know, you talk about the need. Um... What do you feel the need is? I mean, what, what is driving you? What, what change do you hope to have happen in our world? Well, after my brother died, <clears throat> I read every book under the sun on suicide. And I, I, for one, deal with depression. I have for a number of years. I'm medicated. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, but I quickly understood that it's, it was a, 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 the message was repeating. And it wasn't that complicated. It's very simple. It's like you said earlier. We have to take the complexity out of this topic, and we have to build it upon knowledge. And if we are knowledgeable about how to notice what's good and right about someone, then understand and realize what's different about them. And then notice in today's topic, shame. Shame could come from a lot of different things. Could be from a, a youngster not making the soccer team. Could come from a young adult reeling back off of a heroin addiction. It could be a retirement uh, age person that's feeling shame because he, has no, he or she has no worth. Uh, so we need a simple tool. Knowledge brings confidence. Confidence brings action. And that's what we need to learn. Um, Jeff, you and I talked earlier this week and I asked if, if you felt shame um, had anything to do with, with Wayne's um, depression and, and the decision he made. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, you know, uh, during the financial crisis of 2009, uh, when, when we were in the car business, and when the uh, bankruptcy uh, took place of General Motors in 2009, uh, General Motors had a reorganization plan, uh, and that included the Elhart family, and things didn't go the way that General Motors nor the Elhart family planned. And on March 10, the world changed for my brother. And uh, he felt a deep sense of shame. He immediately went to his employees. He felt like he left his employees down. He let them down. And, um, and he immediately felt that sense of shame. And that's what, in my opinion, threw him into a, a deep depression during 2010. So, you know, where did Wayne get kind of the, the expectation, you know, that you take care of your employees, you sell this many cars. Where, where, where did that expectation come from that, that I think he probably felt he had failed? Where, where yeah. did it come from? Well, I think our father taught us. Um, a great father, a great coach, and uh, thank goodness he's be 90 years old in two weeks, so he really taught us. And, and uh, he always uh, taught us to be the very best that we could be in whatever we could con- control. So uh, I think that was his expectations. He didn't corporately, uh, a, he, he lived the Christian life in terms of this, lived the spirit, uh, the fruits of the spirit. He wasn't here on Sunday every day, but uh, he corporately, I mean, he lived the fruit of the spirit. So, you know, he's going to be 90, so that puts him in the builder generation, right? So the builder generation, they rebuilt the world after World War II. 
I mean, so he gave this expect expectation of work hard, be your best. Do you think he ever intended for that to be kind of moved into a sense of shame for Wayne? No, no, of course not. No. No. Uh, father's always been the most loving and giving person, and whatever he's done, he's always done it exactly equal for his two boys. So how do you feel, and I'm, I'm asking a very vulnerable question, so how did it go from dad saying, be your best, to Wayne feeling like he'd failed? Well, I think it was, uh, he had given his best. Wayne had given his best, and all of a sudden things were taken out of his control. Mm. And uh, when things are out of con his control, he felt uh, uh, a sense of worthlessness and helplessness. He, he couldn't help himself. He couldn't help others. And that, those are risk factors when you're dealing with, with uh, clinical depression. So go back. What would have changed that situation? Well, had I known, I, you know, I can't go back in time. Um, but, you know, had I known the tool that we know today, which is notice what's right and what's good about someone, and then what makes them happy, and then notice the change in, in their behavior. And my brother experienced trauma in his life. Uh, in, in our sense, it was losing a significant 50% of our business. And so there's, I, I noticed that. I invited myself to have a loving and caring conversation. But from there, I, I didn't finish the action tool, which is to challenge him to get him professional help. I got him to his primary care physician, and, his, uh, and fortunately, he came to Christ uh, four months before he died, um, and, uh, and then finally empower to get him professional help, period. And the period at the end of be nice is really intentional. Period means it's simple, that's it. Yes, there are more complicated um, uh, situations of mental illness, but generally speaking, 90% of those that die by suicide are dealing with uh, uh, depression. How different is kind of the community now in, in the time that, that you've been pursuing this? I, I would perceive that even in the last three years, as a community in Southwest Michigan, we're more open to conversations in key areas. Do, do you see the same thing? Yeah. You know, thanks to many people here and all people here in this congregation uh, throughout our community, they're the reason why this has happened. Uh, everybody's been willing to come forward and say, yes, uh, we want to be on board. We believe in this action tool. So consequently, 145,000 students around West Michigan are, are being trained. Uh, as you mentioned, um, you know, 250 church leaders were trained in, in, in February. Uh, 25 or 35,000 employees around West Michigan, and then a faith community um, and veteran associations. But there's, we need to be at all these silos of our community so that we're all speaking one common language. It's, as my wife says, it's the stop, drop, and roll of mental illness. What would your hope be for Christ Memorial at the end of this month? What, 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 would, what behaviors would you like to see at the end of this month here? You know, I think, I, I think this church, I'm very, very thankful, thanks to your leadership and bold and brave leadership. When I first got into uh, wanting to bring this message, I mean, almost immediately after my brother died, was that I went to the church, and the church were the first one to say, I'm sorry, we don't want anything to do with this. And um, to the point where two pastors said, we don't think it's our business to get into your business, and, you know, if you have depression, you're kind of marked for life. And so those were kind of uphill battles that, that I and others had to, to deal with. So at the end of the day, uh, I'd like to see Christ Memorial Church uh, be the leader, as it, we already are, thanks to your leadership and the many people in this congregation, to be the leader in this community and continue to bring this message that it's okay to build the knowledge so that we can be confident and consequently take action. Awesome. Can I pray for you? Absolutely. Father, thank you for Jeff. Thank you for the Elhart family. Uh, thank you, Lord, for those of us who have been kind of adopted into the Elhart family and um, join with so many people around our community and, uh, Lord, really uh, growing numbers across our country that are willing to be vulnerable and open our hearts up and open up our experiences and to reveal, Father, 
how your son Jesus and the power of your Holy Spirit has brought a, a, a comfort in just sharing and talking so that we can be a community, Father, of grace and hope and healing. Would you bless Jeff and Sherry. Would you bless their boys, the efforts, Father, West Michigan Mental Health Foundation, so many schools and businesses. Thank you, Father, for businesses that have stepped up and, and said this is important for the health of their employees. And Lord, would you make us all healers? Would you cause us all to take on that, that image of Jesus, that we run to the chaos, we run to the problem, because we know that the power of you, our Heavenly Father, is a power to heal. Make us sojourners with one another that you, Father, may reveal in us the grace, the grace of Jesus. So bless my brother. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank Jeff Thank you. and Sherry. Sherry, wave over there. There you go. I, I always do do this to you, Jim, but in, it, to confirm the scripture today, Wayne borrowed a Bible from a friend of his four days mm. before he died. In, in pencil... The only verses underlined in that Bible were Romans 7, 17 through 19, and Romans 8, 1. Wow. Bless Thank God. Thank you.